So this past weekend, with everyone paying attention to the Logan Paul KSI event in Los Angeles, about three and a half hours north of there in Fresno, California, Jamal Herring defended his WBO Super Featherweight Championship against Lamont Roach. So welcome to Sports Talk with Troy, where I may or may not be an expert, but I'm a longtime fan with informed and knowledgeable opinion. So, Herring and Roach. Herring won a 12 round unanimous decision over, over Roach in the fight. It is his first defense of, of the said championship. Neither Jamal Herring or Lamont Roach are big punchers. I believe Herring is 25 and 2 now with 10 knockouts, and Roach is. I believe 17 to 1 now with nine stoppages. And I would describe the fight as something that I think boxing fans can appreciate, but not a fight that we could convince our non boxing friend, friends to become fans of the sport. I think that's probably the, the best description of, of, the, of the fight itself. It's basically early going to be the first three fourths of the fight. Herring landing one or two shots and stepping out of range. And then in the last quarter of the fight, Roach started to find his range and start to even hurt Herring at times. I think with the fight played out, it goes to my theory that while you don't need to have knockout power as fights progress into the late rounds and championship level you've got to have some sort of like make you think twice or stay off me power going into those those late rounds because I think a better puncher might have at least dropped Herring if not stopped him outright you know I know that you just can't look at the numbers, but you kind of can't look at the numbers and see 10 stoppages in, in 25 fights. And that's not a lot of, lot of power. And I think as fights progress, it makes a difference and it matters. It's just my personal opinion. I bring this up because I believe that top rank who promotes Herring, who also promotes WBC featherweight champion, excuse me, super featherweight champion, Miguel Brochelt, are gonna match him up very soon. And I can see a situation where Herring can be outboxing Burchelt for eight, nine rounds and get stopped in the 10th, 11th, 12th round in, the, in that fight. And that fight's gonna be a big deal because I think the winner of that fight is going to be potentially do a fight with Vesel Lomachenko at, at lightweight. Because top rank doesn't really have a lot of options for Lomachenko beyond the winner of uh, Telfimo Lopez and Richard Comey who fight in December for, for him. So I think they're going to have to do something creative, like move someone up, like a winner of a Herring Rochelle fight, or someone down like Jose Carlos Ramirez from 140. These are my thoughts on both Jamal Herring, Lamont Roach, also future Lomachenko opponents, because I do think that it's, conne it's connected. <clears throat> Um, basically want to make a video to stay busy more than anything else again it was overshadowed by the KSI Logan Paul event and speaking of uh, Jose Carlos Ramirez who I just mentioned who's a unified uh, 140 pound champion He's from the Fresno area, so it's kind of surprised he wasn't on that on that card. Cause he last fight pink in July against uh, Maurice Hooker Unified Championships. Anyways, any thoughts on your part? Please let me in the comment section down below. I don't have a question to really ask in this video. And as usual and always, I may or may not be an expert, but I am a longtime fan with an informed and knowledgeable opinion. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Check the links below and on YouTube at the side of me, and we'll talk soon.